Hi everyone, this is Phil Yeager of Yeager CPA Review. I thought I'd go over a few sections of the Internal Revenue Code dealing with regulation that gives people trouble. The first item I want to talk about is Section 1231. Now, a Section 1231 asset is a non-capital asset, but it may get capital gain treatment. To be a Section 1231 asset, first of all, it must be either personal property or real property used in a trade or business, and it has to be held more than 12 months. Now, let's deal with one type of personal property used in a trade or business, which is held for more than 12 months, that is a Section 1231 asset. And let's assume that we're going to sell this item. And that item is equipment. So we have a piece of equipment that we're going to sell. The selling price is $50,000. The cost of the equipment was $20,000. And we took depreciation of $4,000, giving me a basis of $16,000. Now, if I compare my selling price of fifty dollars to my base of sixteen, dollars there is a gain on the sale of this asset for $34,000. Now, if it is a Section 1231 asset, how do you treat this gain as far as whether it's ordinary, capital, or whatever? Well, first of all, whether you are a corporation or a sole proprietor, the rule is the same as well as how you treat the gain. The first thing is you got to recapture some of the gain, which means that treat it as ordinary income. And the amount of the gain that's treated as ordinary income is the depreciation taken. So we took four thousand of depreciation. That four thousand of the thirty four thousand dollar gain is ordinary income and it is called section twelve forty five gain. So therefore four thousand of the thirty four would be section twelve forty five gain, ordinary income. Now the balance of the gain which is $30,000, would be long-term capital gain, known as Section 1231 gain. So this is the way you treat the gain, whether a corporation or a sole proprietor sells it. Now, let's take some real estate, such as a building. And once again, it is a Section 1231 asset, as long as what? We held it for more than 12 months, and it's put in a trade or business. So we sold this real estate for $50,000. The cost of the real estate was $20,000, and the depreciation taken was $4,000, giving me a basis of 16, and the selling price 50, basis 16. We have a gain on this of $34,000. Now, let's assume we have a sole proprietor who sold this real estate, this Section 1231 real estate. Well, if it's a sole proprietor, all the gain, $34,000, is treated as a long-term capital gain, and long-term capital gains are called Section 1231 gains. So, if it's a sole proprietor, all the gain is Section 1231 gain. But, if you have a corporation who sells this real estate, there's a different rule, which means that you have to recapture some of the gain as ordinary income, and that is called Section 291 gain. So, the amount of the gain, that Section 291 gain, for the sale of a building or real estate, which is a Section 1231 asset by a corporation, says you have to take 20% of the depreciation. 20% of 4000 is $800. And that will be treated as... That will be treated as ordinary income under Section 291. Now, the balance of the gain is Section... 1231 gain, which is what? Long-term capital gain. 
And that would be, all right, I think we subtracted here. This was 34,000 total gain. 800 was ordinary income, which is 20% of the depreciation taken. The balance is $33,200. That would be section 1231 gain, which is long-term capital gain. Now notice, in these transactions, you always recapture the ordinary income first, if any of the gain is ordinary income. Now, let's talk about another one, which is section 12. By the way, these two items deal with maker's depreciation, which means they are assets that were placed in service starting in 1987. Now, what about those assets that were placed in service prior to 1987? Well, if they were placed in service prior to 1987, the depreciation rules that were used back then was called acres. So I have some real estate, which I actually all right, placed in service prior to 1987, and we were using the acres method. Now, under the acres method, we could actually depreciate real estate using accelerated depreciation. So let's take this scenario. We have some real estate, which is $350,000. And the basis of the real estate is $200,000. So if we sold it, we would have a gain of $150,000. Now, this is called Section 1250 property. What it is, it is real estate that was placed in service prior to 1987 under acres when they could take accelerated depreciation. So let's assume this company took accelerated depreciation, and by the way, there were tables back then, of $100,000. Now, the company now goes back and recomputes the depreciation as though you, they were using straight line depreciation. Now, the lives back then were 15, 18, and 19 year. So let's assume that if they took straight line, the depreciation would have been $70,000. So when you calculate the gain on this, the amount of accelerated depreciation that you took in excess of what you could have taken had you taken straight line, that amount is recaptured as ordinary income. And that is called section 1250 gain. And that's the ordinary income. So that would be $30,000. Now, the balance of the gain would be $120,000, which would be a section 1231 gain, which is a long-term cap gain. Now, if the, company didn't only, if the company only took straight line depreciation, there would be no recapture, which means that if they only took straight line depreciation, all the gain would have been Section 1231 gain. So don't forget, this Section 1250 gain recapture deals with assets placed in service prior to 1987 under acres. And once again, you had to hold this for more than 12 months. Now, a few other things. Let's go back to Section 1231 assets. Namely, those assets which are under makers that were placed in service after 1987, and they're in a trade of business and held for more than 12 months. Now, what happens if you sold these 1231 assets, such as personal property used in a trade of business or real property used in a trade of business, and you ended up with a loss on the sale? Well, that loss on the sale is called Section 1231 loss. And the way you treat a Section 1231 loss, it is treated as an ordinary loss. Now, under makers, at the end of the year, you're going to have Section 1231 gains, Section 1231 losses. This is under makers. Now, take all your Section 1231 gains versus your Section 1231 losses. And if the net 1231 gains is a gain, if the net is a gain, 
then you treat that as a long-term capital gain. But if you net your 1231 transactions and they are a loss, you treat it as an ordinary loss and you bring that over to form 4797. So that is basically how you work with this recapture provisions. I hope that you helped. I hope it helped. <laughs> I hope, well, I hope I helped and I hope it helped you. So anyway, hey, I thank you. And when you take that CPA exam, good luck and do well. And by the way, don't panic. Be determined. Determination will get you through the exam. Thank you and see you soon.